Love Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim GK, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Dr. Patty Ann. She's a relationship expert. And she's going to talk about her new book, which is really cute, Not Tonight, Dear, I Got a Business to Run. If you'd like to speak to Dr. Patty Ann, please give us a call at 347-324-3460, 347-324-3460. Or you can post your question in the chat room, and I'll go ahead and read it on the air. Dr. Patty Ann, thank you for joining the program today. You are welcome. I'm so excited to be here to talk about this evergreen issue for women. And it's not really just for women. It's for anybody with a family that's trying to have a life and have a career or build their own business. So it's really for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I guess to begin with, kind of tell us about yourself. Our audience like to hear kind of a personal view then versus us just reading the script because they usually have that online anyway. So sure. kind of tell us about sure. yourself. Sure. Okay. So basically... I consider myself a real relationship expert because I've been married to my husband for well over two decades, the same man who has been the father of my four children. Congratulations. Thank you, including a set of identical twin boys that were my oldest. And I've been an entrepreneur and an author and a business owner for my whole career, for my whole life. So I not only talk the talk, but I walk the walk. And I have a I'm really pretty much a geek at heart, so I have, you know, I'm a registered nurse, I have a master's in nursing, I have a master's in clinical social work, and I have a doctorate in clinical psychology. And my work really crosses the spectrum of relationship skills for success in your business and your life. So I do very high-level relationship work with VIP days, with couples that come in and see me, or I do a lot of work over the internet in packages of like eight and 16 week sessions. And then I also go into companies and do a lot of speaking where I talk about the relationship skills you need to be successful in your career and communication skills and conflict resolution skills. So it's really very exciting to be able to do work that that I really love that transcends so many different platforms. And my book was really, you know, I joke and say it took me 50 years to write it, but I'm really not (laughs) joking. (laughs) Because women have constantly been asking me over my career, how do you do it? And you talk to any woman, and when they say, how do you do it? Everybody knows what it means. How do you have a successful career? without sacrificing happiness in your marriage and family life. And quite frankly, that's the advice I've helped women and their families with for over two decades. And that's really what the book is about. It's really answering that evergreen question for women and their families. Well, oh my gosh. I mean, I've, from you, you know, being a registered nurse, being a social worker, me a master's in degree in social work and the psychologist, that is a lot of time in school and I'm a geek. balancing, yeah, yeah and balance, being a nurse and balancing not only a husband and your four kids, but twins. I know how difficult it is to have twins, especially at infants and toddlers, because yeah. one goes to sleep, one wakes up and is like this revolving circle that keeps happening until they get more independent. So during that time that you were doing all your studies and working, Did you start your business there or you start the foundation of your business or the idea of your business then? Okay. Well, basically, my twins were born and they were very, and they were boys. My three oldest are boys and boys anyway are younger when they stay younger longer, you know. (laughs) Uh, I'm not so sure you guys ever catch up, but that's a whole different discussion. (laughs) But I had my twins. They were very ill. They actually almost died. They are truly in the medical textbook as baby A and baby B. They're fine now. They're more than fine now. And then within two years of that, somehow, I'm not quite sure how that happened, I had my third son. 
So for those first three years of my young child's life, and I talk about kids' life, and I talk about this in the book, I mean, mm-hmm. my life was pretty much insane, and I worked at that time very part time for somebody else. But I knew when my third son was born that in order for me to parent and raise my family the way I wanted to, I was going to have to be my own boss. There was no way anybody in creation would be as flexible to meet my own needs as I was able to do. And don't misunderstand that. I truly believe people that work for themselves are the hardest working people on the planet. We're just not mm-hmm. working p- perhaps nine to five. So once my children were born and they were very sick, I literally knew at that moment that I was going to be able to work for myself. I'm not exactly sure I knew how that would transcend and develop and evolve. But I did know that once I gave birth to my children, that the model, you know, particularly the corporate model or any model of working and keeping your business and your personal life separate, I knew that wouldn't work for me. And Mm -hmm. I have a newsflash. It doesn't really work that well for men either. Look at Wall Street and what's happened with the financial world. So I knew at that point I was going to have to work for myself. And because I knew that when I looked at my schedule and I went on to have four children in six years, I would, t- and this is a little bit content of the book, but I'll, it sort of kind of makes sense to talk about it now. Sure. I talk about creating a family plan that complements rather than competes against your business plan. So right away, wow. that premise suggests that you're looking at your family plan and you superimpose it on your business plan. Mm-hmm. And in order for that to work, you have to look at what what your goals are in your business. And most books, most business books talk about business plans and business goals. And most relationship books talk about relationship goals. This book, not tonight, dear, I've got a business to run. No pun intended, I marry the two concepts. So I talk about mm-hmm. creating a family plan that complements your business plan meaning. Before you have children, and if you're in a relationship, your family plan will look one way based upon your business goals. If your business Mm -hmm. goals stay the same and you have a child, well, now you have to make a whole new family plan, the obvious being child care. When you have a second child, you have to then go back and revisit that family plan because what worked for you with one child might not work with the second. And along the same lines, Tim, As your business evolves and grows or your career, your goals change as well. So if you're running a business making $50,000 a year or you're in a corporate position making fifty grand, your family plan that works for you will look very different than if your business evolves to making $100,000 or your goal is to make a million dollars or you go from being a director to being um, um, a corporate officer your family plan, you have to then go back and look at your family plan and rework it. And so it's constantly in flux, but the beauty is with your family plan, you know, okay, what do I need to change? Is it child care? Is it the amount of time that my husband and I will have together on the weekends, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense to your question? Yeah, it does. This is really amazing because nobody ever looks at a family plan where their business plan and because it we're supposed seems to keep like, like separate and it doesn't work yeah it doesn't work for uh, especially you know for women i can see that for men it doesn't because what happened guys who just immerse themselves so much into the business and families go by the wayside they give that to mom to handle or the wife to handle well they have a wife vice- right <laughs> yeah so and then vice versa women who has to juggle kids and run into the household themselves and they're stuck with it. And also you're dealing with a marriage. There's always saying that even in business, we have, if you have a partner in the firm or whatever, you're actually married to them because you're going to be around them so much and making decisions together. So partnerships are marriage in the business world. And this is truly a marriage. And try to, you know. People that have read my book, Tim, have said that this book is for anybody mm -hmm. in any partnership. You're exactly right. You're you're dead on. Um, Talk about the struggles real quick. You know, marriages have their own dynamics in itself. The family has its own dynamics. How can, what advice do you tell a couple 
hey, part of this, you need to do your family planning, your family plan and your business plan. You need to work it together. But how can you take these two different cultures of a guy and a male and female who have different viewpoints on things to merge that together? Say, hey, you got to really sit at the table. We have to work this out. And not only we're just doing our family plan, our, our business plan, also our plan as a couple, how you manage all those things together. Because even you have a family is one thing, and then you have your marriage you still have to work on. Right. If that's right. making sense. Oh, yes. No, it makes perfect sense. And honestly, you're asking perfect questions because what you're describing is that couples need to be able to have communication skills. And what you need to do with the family plan is communicate what you develop. See where the areas of conflict are and then have a discussion and see what you're willing to compromise and negotiate. So, for example, to answer your question very concretely, there are a bunch of considerations that you need to take into place. Actually, there's 50 when you create your family plan. and. Mm -hmm. The way I suggest a couple do it, and in the book, I have exercises and I have PDFs that you can download, you can write all over the place. I mean, I really want people to look at the book as a resource and to dog, to, you know, use dog ears to mock certain spots, because I really want you to look at every aspect of your life. So the different areas that you need to consider when you create your family plan, let's talk about the first one being financial consideration, okay? So if you're an entrepreneur, you need to look at how much capital investment do you initially need to get your business up and running. So you need to borrow capital to invest. Where will that capital come from? What part of your assets will it involve? What kind of purchases do you need? How much per month will it cost to support the business? And then you look at, and again, this is where you're looking at business, a business plan. What's the learning curve of your business? And based on industry standards, how long will it take? How long can you anticipate it will be before your business becomes profitable? Now, you need, if you're the business owner creating a new business, you need to sit down and answer these questions that are actually on page like 18, 19, and 20 of my book. And then you need to show it to your partner and have a discussion. Okay, it's going to require $10,000 of initial capital. Where do you sit? What's the best way to get that money? Do we borrow it mm -hmm. from a 401k? Do we take out a business loan? God forbid, do we borrow from our parents and the complications that will create, right? So the person starting the business needs to write down the answers to those questions and then you need to have a discussion about it with your partner. So this way, if you start a business and, you know, lots of times your spouse will say, oh, yeah, start your business, it's great, go for it. And you're off and running and you don't have this discussion. And then the credit card comes in a month later and there's a $5,000 charge. And the spouse, and it doesn't have to be the man, it can also be the woman, the spouse is saying, huh, where did this $5,000 come from? And like, well, it's for the business. Well, what do you mean? Well, like, you know I was starting a business. You didn't say anything about the $5,000, though. Like, well, I needed to buy a new computer. I needed to get some blah, 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 blah. Had you had the discussion before, it, before the money charge hits, it would alleviate a ton of problems in the relationship. And that's true for whether we're talking about charges related to a business or charges related to a life. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So what I try to do is have you create the business plan. And I literally have exercises that you go through that you do by yourself and your partner does mm -hmm. by himself. And then you come together and you say, okay, out of 10 things, maybe six of them were on the same page. So we have four that we have to work through. And that's where I have the whole second half of the book is on communication skills and conflict resolution and how to make a relationship work because it's not that healthy couples don't fight. All couples fight. It, it's such a fallacy out there to think that happy couples don't fight. But what makes a couple happy versus one that's not is how they fight. So do they argue? Do they disagree with respect? 
And when they disagree, do they respectfully agree to disagree, as opposed to name-calling and screaming and shouting and yelling? Because lots of times when somebody doesn't agree with us, it's not that they don't agree with us. It's that either they're wrong or they're stupid, (laughs) which, of course, is not true. And that's why everybody is so upset with the political discourse in this country, because nobody's having a conversation. Everybody's just yelling at each other. Taking that, that communication back in the ways of communication, that's always a difficult thing with anyone. Some people really get at it, but to most cases get equal to equal, it's going to be kind of real difficult in one sense. I'm For sorry, example, what do you mean by equal to equal? Well, equal to equal. For example, in corporate America, if you're in the top tier executive office, you know Part of your job is to be an effective communicator. If you're the CEO, yeah, of most the of them are, company. by the way. But and they, ahead. yeah, they communicate constantly because that's who they are and they train to do. However, the average person don't communicate. And you have let's take the dynamics of a couple. You have there there are some couples that know each other well and they communicate well. There's a lot of couples who can communicate well because one have a role of hey, I'm not going to say caveman idea. Okay, I'm right always. I'm the guy in the relationship, and what I say goes. Then you have the women that somewhat do the same thing. Say, no, he's supposed to take care of that, and -hmm. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to put my head in the sand, and if it falls apart, and if God forbid it falls apart, then I can pick it up. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes nothing talks about you spend $5,000, as you say, and all of a sudden they'll come in. Nobody has any money. Then the conflict starts. Same thing we have in Congress right now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And, it's true. It's true. <laughs> so they're throwing things. They're communicating, but they're communicating by throwing things at each other, pots and pans and whatever. Well, so, actually, can we, let me interrupt you for a second because okay. what you're describing is an exchange of words. And it's let, let me define for you communication. It's not communication that we need in our marriage, in our home, in our Congress, in the world. Mm-hmm. What we need is effective communication. Wow. And people think just by t- saying words to each other, they're communicating. And in fact, they're not communicating anything. You know, there's a f- the famous comedian, George Bernard Shaw, once joked, but it's so true when he said, the biggest problem with communication is, do you want to take a guess? No. The, big- <laughs> the biggest problem with communication <laughs> is the illusion that it has taken place. Oh, wow. So, It's not just that we need to choose our words carefully and we need to have our body language match our words. The critical component that's missing more often than not, and it's in part of what you just described in Congress, is that Mm -hmm. nobody is actively listening. So I can be the most eloquent speaker in the world, but I haven't communicated a darn thing if nobody is actively listening to me. And the way we actively listen, and I speak about this in detail in the book, is, look, most people listen by one of two ways. They stand there listening to you speak, just sitting there, standing there thinking, just, gee, I wish they'd hurry up and stop talking so I can say what I want to say. (laughs) And that's how you get caught up in the conversation, the argument, I told you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Well, they did. But you didn't hear it because you were waiting for them to finish so you could talk. Mm-hmm. The other way people listen is they listen to you with a critical ear, meaning they're listening to what you have to say so they can find fault or point out the mistake you made so they can prove you wrong. Oh. Yeah. And again, that's not listening. So the way to actively listen is to truly listen with no hidden agenda, no mm-hmm. preconceived notions, and with an open heart and an open mind. And most people do not listen that way. And that is why for never before in the history of man have we had so many ways, Tim, to communicate with each other. Email, iPod, Skype, I could go on and on. And yet never before, I think, have we ever done it so poorly. Absolutely. Nobody's actively listening. You're absolutely right. Have you ever had to go to a business to kind of Open, I mean, to not to be the negotiator, but hey, as going to be a business counselor, you know, have a marriage counselor, and uh, you go to be the business and marriage counselor for a particular couple who are or a business who have in conflict with that communication. Well, I go into corporations all the time. I go into companies mm-hmm. all the time, and I teach them 
communication, conflict resolution skills all the time. All the time. Wow. Well, what is the biggest thing that you find within that communication? What is not taking place? Well, first of all, I do have to say I disagree with what you said earlier about corporate executives. They communicate all the time because that's their job. I don't think they mm-hmm. communicate effectively at all. I think they like to dictate to people. I don't think half the seven out of ten times they don't want to hear anything that you have to say. They just want to shove wow. an idea down your throat. And that's a big problem so that there's no information that's going up in a company. It's just the higher up, the higher ups are told what they want to hear. And they forget, like they'll say to me, Dr. Patty Ann, I ran this by my people and they all agree with me. I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, they all said it's a good idea. I said, really? They said, yep. I said, who's in charge of their performance review? Well, I am. Who's in charge of the bonus? Well, I am. And you really think they're telling you the truth. So so (laughs) the business relationship is a little bit more complicated, but now you take a successful business person and you bring him home and guess what? His Mm -hmm. wife or her husband He's not going to tell them what they want to hear. They're going to tell them the truth. And by the way, as I'm telling you the truth, could you take the garbage out? <laughs> and that creates a whole bunch of problems in a relationship. Regarding that word, the truth, I think one of the biggest things is we stick a head in the sand. We necessarily don't want, and your boss don't really want to hear the truth if he's a dictator. And I guess you have that dynamic that really, what can I say to him and I can communicate with him? However, just taking an extreme case, you have some managers or ex- feel like they're affected by having the iron hand around somebody's throat in some companies. And yeah, the true dictator and uh, to get them to do things, they have to almost threaten death or threaten that they, that you will get fired or, you know, get the mother or whatever. When you go into an operation like that, you know, your CEO or your don't really know what's going on in that mid level to that low level type opportunity. But when you go and interview some people, I'm not sure that you go into interview some of the people in the office and employees in the offices and then they go to then you sit down and have that discussion. What do you say to a guy that is that much of a dictator that he has to rule with an iron fist to keep his employees in uh well there's under all control? different there's all different management styles, right? And people think that's mm-hmm. managing and it's not. You know, leaders are Made. They're not born. And the whole, whole thing about, you know, leadership development that I do also. But a lot of companies have what's called a 360 review. So I can almost just read to them what the criticisms are from the, re- the anonymous reviews that come by. My work wow. is to see how they handle that. I can also walk into a company and almost immediately feel the corporate culture there. You know, I have to mm-hmm. give it to the West Coast in Silicon Valley where one of my children works. Very different corporate culture than where I am on the East Coast. Very different corporate culture. And that's why Silicon Valley is so innovative because you're allowed to challenge and challenging is encouraging. You know, mm-hmm. there's also, there are all companies here on the East Coast. I mean, I happen to know like Bloomberg, everybody, there's no corner office, there's no titles. And part of that is to encourage feedback and, you know, democratic process. But in companies where, you know, the person rules with the iron fist, if the person owns the company, they can do whatever they want. I will mm-hmm. tell you that even if they're successful, they're not as successful as they could be. But you can never quantify that. And, you know, that's quite frankly, that type of leadership style is a lack thereof. It's why many people leave the corporate world and work for themselves. Wow. Why is the culture so different from the West Coast, like Silicon Valley versus Wall Street? Well, because Wall Street is strictly financial driven and it's much older, where whenever you have something new, you you don't have the years of ingraining a corporate culture to have to change. And in Silicon Mm -hmm. Valley, it is truly the next greatest idea Ideas are not incubated in structure. Ideas come about through freedom. For example, this country. Mm -hmm. The reason why we can do things and we're so innovative is because we are much younger. We don't have centuries of a culture that bogs us down. But the East Coast business world is so much older than Silicon Valley where it's just, hey, you know what? The 21-year-old really might have something to add. 
Whereas here, it's like you got to put East Coast, you got to put in your time and climb that corporate ladder. Whereas for women that become entrepreneurs that are outpacing men in the entrepreneurial world, and by the way, in graduate school, medicine and law, which is why I wrote my book, because they're outpacing men as entrepreneurs two to three or one to three. They're becoming small business owners, even as attorneys and physicians and lawyers. It's because women don't, are not going to put up with that. They're not going to put up with the face time. You know what? They're leaving because they're going to pick up the kids or they want to go to the game. And I think they are, you know, Dalai Lama said that the world would be saved by the Western woman. And I think that's true. And specifically, and I will say this to any audience, the American woman, because we have the education, we have the opportunity, and we have the freedom. And we do it through entrepreneurship. You know what? If it doesn't work for us, you know, we're mad at someone, we're not going to take it anymore. We create our own company. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't challenges that go along with that, but I do think that that's a real strong reason as to why women are leading the pace for being an entrepreneur. Wow. Tell us about the difference of the unicorn effect, I think, in your book. What do you work, your life, balance, and unicorns have in common? Okay. So basically, when I, lots of times when I talk about the book, I start with saying, you know, what do work-life balance and unicorns have in common? And the answer to that is, quite frankly, it's a myth. Neither one mm-hmm. of them exists. You know, women and our families, I think the biggest myth that has been perpetuated on us for the last 50 years is this concept of work-life balance. And if you talk to so many educated women and their spouses and you ask them, do you know any woman that has work-life balance? The way it's described in the media and in the literature, everybody will tell you no. Well, there's a reason Mm -hmm. for that, because it doesn't exist. And the last thing women need is to feel badly about chasing something or not having something that doesn't exist. So when I say work-life balance doesn't exist, I my, what I respond to that with, and this is where the book has gotten such rave reviews by like Barbara Corcoran of Shark Tales and Liz Lang, most women know Liz Lang of Liz Lang Maternity Clothes, is that I now tell you, okay, so how do we create a life we love? How do we create a thriving business or a successful career without sacrificing happiness in our marriage and family life if work-life balance doesn't exist? And the answer to that is I've created a proven system with exercises and real life, real doable solutions, right? I've been doing this mm-hmm. for kids. I don't live in a bubble where you reconcile your work and your family responsibilities. And part of reconciling your work and family responsibilities, reconcile from the Latin, right? Which I took forever. Now it finally mm-hmm. comes in handy, meaning you come to terms with between things that were in opposition, okay? You reconcile it by creating this family plan that complements rather than competes against your business plan. And this is where for women and for their families, so men too, we can keep our business and personal life separate. We need to know what our business goals are as we create a family plan to make sure our family plan matches it. We need to know what family plan will work based upon what our career and business goals are. And I I lay out the entire thing. I literally walk you through a proven system, step-by-step, exercise-by-exercise, so that you can create a family plan that is unique to your family based upon the Mm -hmm. uniqueness of your goals. Wow. So when you sit there and go through that particular plan, you kind of go through... Is it like a six month plan or one year plan in a sense? And how do you, if so, if you do that one year plan or two year plan, how do you keep them focused on it? And when things change, how do you actually advise them and how to change it or to adapt to it? Okay. So basically, it takes a couple of hours to invest in to create the family plan. All right. But the, the thing about your family plan is your family, just like your business, is ever evolving and changing. Just think about the person that you are at 25 is not who you are at 30, is not who you are at 35, is not who you are at 40. So what Mm -hmm. worked for you or make you happy at 40 would not be the same thing that worked for you or made you happy at 25. So the family plan is based upon 
very specific criteria that I was mentioning earlier. So what are your child care issues when you have an infant? They're very different than your child care issues when you have school-age children, which are very different than your child care issues when you have teenagers. And I take you step to step through that so that as your family ages and as your business evolves, when you find there's a kink in the system that's not working for you, you know exactly where you need to go in your family plan that you have to rewrite or you don't want to rewrite that part of your family plan. So now, okay, so you only want to have your kids in after school three days a week. So now you have to go back and look at your business plan and say, well, maybe I need to be in, to bring in a business partner or maybe I have to change my financial goals. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't want to make the concessions with my family life that is required of running a million dollar business. Mm-hmm. You're constantly evolving your family and your business plan as you yourself evolve. So you need to think of your family plan as a map as well as a compass for your entrepreneurial business or for your career. And when you create a family plan, it doesn't eliminate any of your dreams or challenges. But what it does do, and this is critical, Tim, what it does Mm -hmm. do is it ensures that you are at least traveling with your partner on the same path in the same general direction. And thoroughly discussing your business dreams and plans with your partner and your family helps you choose the best entrepreneurial path for career goals with the most potential for satisfying your long-term goals as an individual, as a couple, Mm -hmm. and as a family. So you're constantly re-evolving. You're evolving and re-evaluating this plan. And by the way, you can... When you create your family plan, you can make it formal or informal. You can make it written or verbal or recorded and, and revise it as you go along. Wow. And saying that, before a couple start, they have one or the other or both have an idea of starting a business. What are the first couple of things you say? Of course, you need to keep in mind you need a business plan. You need a family plan. Here are the expectations. What do you say to them at the start and phase to make this a smooth trans- transition from startup to a business? Okay. So the very first thing I do is I tell them, do you have a business plan for your business? Okay. And most people know they need one. If they don't have one, I tell them you need to create a business plan. You need to write down what your goals are and the objectives and how you see yourself getting them and achieving mm-hmm. them and, and with what timeline. When they have those, then I tell them that there's 50 questions that I've created that are designed to launch them and their partner into the initial discussion of some of the larger issues that are related to self-employment and entrepreneurship. Okay. And you can, they can write down these que- the answers to these questions, or they can just discuss them as they go along. So as I said earlier, financial consideration. What's the initial investment? What's the ongoing investment? What's the length of time before you can expect a positive cash flow, et cetera? Time consideration. How much time do you think your business will require to be successful? And I say, do you think, because, you know, the devil's in the details. You might have to Mm -hmm. go back and revisit that. Do you find that you need to be working in the evening and on the weekend? And perhaps you never did that before. What are the ramifications for that with your family? with your children, with your marriage? Do you have to work on the weekends? Do you have to work during holidays? If you go into business for yourself, opening up a bakery, well, you have to work Christmas, you have to work Easter, you have to work Thanksgiving. If you're coming from a corporate job, you've never worked those holidays before. Then you have to talk about to be successful, do you have to travel? What does that mean for your family? Will you work out of your home? Will you rent office space? Again, what are the financial and the emotional considerations of those decisions. How do you handle stress? What's the perceived stress of your business? How will that impact your relationship with your spouse and with your children? Mm -hmm. How does your business option support your goals as a couple? Will you take a financial hit? Or is it the vacations you take every year, will you not be able to afford that? Because that money, which you've discussed earlier, perhaps has now been rechanneled and gone into your business. And is your partner okay with that? And does your business mesh with your partner's goals? 
So if you have to work evenings, three evenings a week, and your husband works the evening shift, how are you going to manage that? So if you have these plans already discussed, which doesn't mean they won't need tweaking, when Mm -hmm. issues come up, it's not such a disaster and you're not finger pointing and saying, well, I thought you would, well, I thought you would, because we know what they say about when you assume, A-S-U-M-E. So (laughs) this family plan eliminates the assumptions that create a lot of problems in the marriage, whether it's related to a business or not. If you, oh my, just kind of take a passage from your book that really speaks to you and kind of summarize the whole story or something that personally you really like in, in your book that you can just share with us. Sure. Okay. This is actually written in my prologue. Okay. And this is what it, this is what I write. Because I really do believe everything in the book is important, regardless mm-hmm. of the scope or the size of your work. This book speaks to entrepreneurial women and business owners across the board and their families. So whether you hold an MBA from an Ivy League university or a high school diploma, this book contains invaluable information and proven strategies for you. The creation of a business that complements rather than competes against our marriage and family life is an evergreen issue for all working women. Although this book has been written for entrepreneurial women, it is relevant for corporate women who also feel pressured to make the same false choice between a successful career and a happy and meaningful marriage and family life. It is your life to live. Don't let anyone tell you how to live it. As entrepreneurial women, we know success is not truly measured by the bottom line of our business, but by the quality of our interpersonal relationships. Our marriage and children hold the most sacred place in our heart. With careful deliberation and planning, you can reconcile your marriage and career and create success and happiness on your own terms. Wow. Question real quick. In this, I know you can get this book off of Amazon. Yes. Uh, okay. Any other books, resellers you can get this book from? Okay. Well, right now I'm directing everybody to Amazon.com. And okay. I would love for you to purchase. It literally will change your life. It is mm-hmm. groundbreaking. Barbara Corcoran even wrote that Dr. Patty and Rosa Pasleaf to tackle what just may be the last frontier for women who yearn to create wildly successful businesses while keeping their marriage and family intact. It's brilliantly written in a practical jewel of a book that every woman should read and take to heart. So what I'd like you to do is just to go on Amazon.com now and mm-hmm. purchase the book and, and or like it. And I would really encourage people to get my free relationship advice newsletter mm-hmm. on going to relationshiptoolbox.com. Go to my website, www.relationshiptoolbox.com and okay. opt in to get my free newsletter. It is truly free. Okay. And the last question I have is how do you market yourself? I mean, um, I mean, you have, you've been on a lot of TV shows or a lot of magazines. How do you actually take, because this is your second book or your third book? No, this is my first book. Okay, first book. How have you marketed yourself in the marketplace? Well, basically, I'm out there. I'm speaking all the time. I'm on, I do radio interviews. I do TV interviews. I have mm-hmm. my free newsletter. And, you know, honestly, at this point, a lot of my marketing people find me and they come to me and then I have to pick and choose, you know, how I'm going to delegate my time. Wow. Yeah, just noticing even Barbara Crocker and also made some comments and you took a picture with her, uh, which is uh, really amazing. But again, I really appreciate it. Any last words that you will have about your book and what couples need to be prepared for? Okay, what I would encourage all couples to do is to really take the time to go through the exercises in the system. It's mm-hmm. a proven system. It will work. Don't believe the naysayers. You know, L- I think it was John Wooden, who was a legendary basketball coach at UCLA, said, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Take mm-hmm. the time. Take the couple of hours. The book shows you what to do. And have this important discussion so that before you hit the stormy seas, you already have your lifeboat and your life preserver in place. So you know exactly where to go so you can weather the storm. 
So I would encourage you to get the book and use it. Use it all the time. Constantly revisit it. Rework it. Rewrite it. And don't worry about anybody else's system or plan. Do what works for you, for your family goals, the way you want to raise your family, not the way anybody else tells you you quote unquote should. It's your life. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. It can be done. I've done it. This is the system I've used. Great. There's no well, magic, Petty, but you have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it. Again, thank you for coming on the program. Really appreciate it. And a lot of small businesses, startups, I listen to the show can really benefit from your book. But thank you so much for coming on. You are welcome. And again, check me out at relationshiptoolbox.com and mm-hmm. please go into amazon.com and invest in the book. It will be the best investment you could make in both your business and your career and your mind. Great. All right. Again, thank you have so great- much. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. This show can be downloaded from iTunes or Blog Talk Radio. We do ask you, if you can, to go to write a review about the episode itself. Some good comments. We really appreciate it. Again, Dr. Patty Ann, relationship expert, on her new book, Not Tonight, Dear, I've Got a Business to Run. Thank you for listening to the program again. It's Tim J.K., your host. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.